So uh, today should be we should start you know the transistor applications. So we should highlight uh, one of the applications, okay? But to understand the applications, we should understand first or reduce first what is called transfer characteristics of the bipolar transistor or BGT transistor, okay? It's very important because based on this uh, transfer characteristics, okay, we're gonna, you know, deduce or know what kind of applications we can use the transistor for, okay? So first, what is, uh, what is the transfer characteristics basically? For any device, for any, you know, uh, electric circuits, okay? A transfer characteristics means something, it's a transfer, something from input to output, okay? So it's basically a relation, an equation that relates uh, the input to the output or the output to the input, whatever, okay? And it's usually come uh, as a form of a plot. So you, you draw some plot, a relation between the output and the input. So you can know uh, based on that plot, when you change the input to some value, what will be the output, okay? So let's do that for this simple circuit here in the screen. We have a very simple circuit, okay? Uh, you have here a source, which I call V input. Let's, we have here a source, V input. And the output will be taken from the collector uh, terminal. And usually, usually, not all the time, but usually, or for most applications, we use uh, the base as our input and the collector as, out, uh, as our uh, output, okay? So to get the transfer characteristics for this circuit, we should get the relation between V output or a plot between V output, the output here, which is just VC, the voltage of the collector, and V input which is the input near the base of the transistor. Okay. This relation should be general for any input. So we should span V input from minus infinity to infinity and see for each one of these values, what will be the output. Of course, this is you know impossible to take each point, but we will take ranges for this, okay? So let's start for example, Number one, so the solution here. Number one. What if V input less than 0.7? We know that in order to turn on the transistor, either in active or saturation, there should be a voltage on the base emitter uh, junction. Okay, the junction should be forward biased, either in forward uh, active region or the saturation region. And there should be a source in the circuit near the base that can give this biasing or this 0.7 to the base emitter junction. And in that case, it's the input. So basically, if the input is less than 0.7, okay? So VBE will be for sure less than 0.7. So the junction will be the base emitter junction is off. Okay? This is valid for, for example, V input equal to 0.5 or 0.3 or 0.1 or zero or even minus, okay? So from minus infinity to 0.7, each one of these values will, <laughs> will not, is not enough to turn on the transistor uh, or to give the junction its forward, required forward bias voltage, which is 0.7. So for all these values from minus infinity to 0.7, the transistor will be off. And if the transistor is off, if the transistor is off, then or cut off, cut off region.
<laughs> then uh, IB equal to IC equal to IE equal to zero. Very good. Okay. So what is what should be the output in that case? The output, if you look at this circuit here, is equal to VCC minus, if there is a current here, IC, ICRC. <laughs> Very simple. IC in that case is zero. So V out is equal to VCC, which is 10 in that case. Very good. So in number one here, the transistor is cut off. The input. This cutoff region will be for any value of the input from minus infinity until 0.7. And for all that range, the output is equal to VCC equal to 10. Okay, this is number one. Number two. We have now the cutoff region. We know when the transistor will turn on cutoff region. Now the turn for active and saturation. I will jump to the saturation region, okay? Then we go back to active. So we know that whenever we increase IB, okay? And, you know, uh, continue increasing, continue increasing, okay? Uh, at some point, the transistor will go into saturation because when we, just look at this equation. So let's change the color. Just look at this equation. You know that IC equal to theta IP. So IC is dependent on IB. So whenever you increase IB, you will increase IC as well. If you increase IC, the subtracted portion in this equation, remember V out is VC, okay? The subtracting portion will increase. So VC will decrease, okay? So let's write this note here on, on the side. So if you increase IB, IC will increase. So VCE or VC, of course, VE, uh, V emitter rate is zero. So VC is equal to VCE will decrease. And do you know that? In saturation, VC is equal to 0.2, okay? So if you increase IB, IC will increase, VCE will decrease until it reaches 0.2, then it goes to the saturation region, okay? But what, what, what makes IB to increase? IB increases if the input increases, okay? So we're gonna calculate now what is called the V input set. The, satur the input, the, v, the, the value of V input that will turn the transistor into saturation. You remember guy V input minimum in diodes? The input, the, input, the minimum input that will turn the diode on. This is very similar, okay? So let's calculate. Yeah. Let's do this. V input set. What is V input set? Basically, the minimum input voltage that will turn the transistor circuit in saturation region. So for any V input larger than V input set transistor in saturation, 
VCE, which is in this case, just equal to VC, which is V output, okay, equal to 0.2. Okay, let's calculate it. So at V input set, this is the edge of saturation. This is the point between active and saturation. I will assume here that all the point in saturation, uh, VC is point two. Although I told you uh, maybe two lectures ago that at the beginning of saturation, VC is point three around point three. Then in deep saturation, uh, VC is point two. I will assume here that all points in saturation is point two. Okay, just for simplicity, because we, we are driving this characteristic uh, transfer characteristics to understand how we can use transistors. What is the applications of transistors? It's not the goal by itself. Good. So at the input set, we know that VCE is equal to 0.2. That's very nice. Because now if we look at the circuit, we can determine IC. So uh, this is VO is just VC. It's just VCE because the, the emitter voltage is zero. So VCE is equal to VC. And the IC is equal to this point, VCC, sorry, minus this point, which is VC or V out or VCE over or you know divided by rc good so let's do that so ic equal to vcc minus vc over rc and rc is equal i'm sorry vce and vc is equal to vce equal to 0.2 so we can determine IC. So IC equal to how much? Yeah, point eight nine uh, nine nine eight milliampers. Okay. Okay. Now we can determine IB as well. IB is equal to at the at the edge of saturation is still IC equal to beta IB at edge of saturation, so let's write it down, at edge of saturation, which in other words, at the input set, is still IC equal to beta IB. So IB is equal to IC over beta, which is 100. So this will be 0098 milliampers. Now we can determine the input set because if we look at the loop here, this guy is 0.7, this guy is IB. So the input set equal to IB RB plus 0.7. Very simple Kershaw, KVL, that's the input loop. The input set equal to IB RB plus 0.7. And based on that, this is equal to 0.7 plus IB RB is, uh, this will be multiplied by 100 kilo ohms and it's a milliampere, so kilo will go as milli. So 0.89, uh, 0.98. So this is 168 volts. So basically, for any V input larger than V input set and less than infinity, you know, this is 168 volt. The transistor will be in saturation and VCE equal to VC equal to VO equal to 0.2. So we get, we get two ranges now. The range in which the transistor is cut off 
and the range in which the transistor is saturation. No, what happened in between? What happened between V input minimum, the minimum input that will turn the diode in the transistor on, which is 0.7, and V input set. Basically, the transistor will be in active region. So number three, so this is number two. So number one is actually the cutoff. Number two is saturation region. Number three is active region. Number three. When the input is larger than 0.7, less than the input set. 168 volt. The transistor here is active region. Good. So let's analyze it. Let's get the relation between the input versus the output. This is range, remember. I'm not saying the input is equal to one or two. No, it's a range. I'm saying what is the output? when the input is between 0.7 and 168. We will get a relation now, an equation, with the output on one side, like y, and the input on another side, like x. Okay, IB. If we look here to the circuit, IB equal to this point minus this point over the resistor, over the resistor RB. This point is V input. This point is 0.7. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry again. And the resistor is 100 kilo ohms or, or, or RB. So let's do that. So IB is equal to V input. And remember now V input is between 0.7 and 168 minus 0.7 over RB. Okay. And the IC equal to beta IB. So it's equal to uh, beta over RB, V input minus 0.7. And VC, which is V output, is equal to VCC minus ICRC equal to VCC minus IC is what? IC is this, this stuff here, this relation. So RC theta over RB, V input minus 0.7. That's very nice because this is what we want. We want the output on a side and the input on the other side and everything else should be known. Yes, and everything else should be known. VCC is 10, RC I think 10 kilo ohms, theta is 100, RB is 100 kilo ohms and 0.7 of course is a constant. So if you do that, VO will be equal to 17 minus 10 V input. So for that particular circuit, when we work in active region, the relation between the output and the input is, is like this. It's a linear, linear relation, but with a minus. So it's, it's a negative slope. Okay, so let's draw this. So let's draw the, the characteristics. So let's draw it. So we have basically, yeah, three relations we can say. Number one, uh, when the input, IR is then minus infinity, less than, 0.7, the VO is equal to VCC, 10. Number two, in between, between V input and V input set, the transistor will be inactive and VO is equal to 17 minus 10 V input. And lastly, when V input is larger than V input set, uh, VO is equal to 0.2 all the time. This is cutoff. Ah. This is cutoff. This is active region. And this is saturation region. Let's put them in a square and let's draw that. Let's plot that. 
plots the relation between V input and V output. So let's have something like this. And But we'll draw it in a so let's assume this is one uh, point oh. it's point seven five three point six. Nine, one point two, one point five, one point eight, and continue. This is the input. This is the output. Okay. So, first locate the point seven. So the point seven may be here. Seven here. Yeah. This is point seven. And one six one point six input set to one point six eight. So one point six one point seven. So it's maybe here, very close to here. One point six eight the input set. Okay. So for any V input, let's just assume this is. This is a 10, this is C equal to 10. So for any input less than 0 0.7, the output is constant equal to VCC, which is 10, constant equal to uh, VCC or 10, 10 volt in that example. Okay. And for any value larger than 168 until infinity, so the output is constant 0.2. And in between, it's uh, a, re a linear relation, okay? Should be something either like this or like this, okay? If we look at the equation, it's negative slope, so it will be like this. So we need two points to draw, at least to draw that relation, okay? Any two points, any two points, okay? Remember that this point, this point and this point, Okay, are belong also to the to the active region. This is a transition point between either cutoff and active or cutoff and saturation. Okay, and if you uh, substitute by V input, so let's do it. Let's put, for example, V input is equal to 0.7. So if you put uh, equal uh, 0.7, this will give you 17 minus 7, which is 10. So this is the first point. Very nice. If you substitute by V input equal to 1.68, it will be 17 minus 16.8, which is 0.2. So this is the second point. Then you draw between them the relation, the re linear relation. And now let's look at the transfer characteristics and to try to understand how can we use this transistor, this new creature that we know. We just started three days, three week, three lectures ago. Good. So let's look at here, at the characteristics. So this is basically the cutoff region. This is basically the saturation region. As I said, whenever we are in saturation region, the voltage output will be 0.2 or BCE. And whenever we are cut, cut off, there is no current, so V out is equal to VCC. And here is the active. This is the active region. Okay. Good. Let's look first at the cutoff and the uh, saturation. In cutoff, so the input is less than 0.7, small value. 
low value or a small value. Although the output is equal to 10, high value. How about, let's do it here, saturation. Look at the input now. The input can be from 1.68 to, to infinity. So if you put, for example, input equal to five or 10, okay, high, high value, then the output will be small, very small. So opposite. So the input one six is larger than, greater than 1.68, high value. The output is equal to 0.2, low value. So look at here. In here, the input is high, the output is low. In saturation, the input is high. I'm sorry, the, the input is, uh, I'm sorry. The, it is the opposite here. In cutoff, the input is low, the output is high. Here, the input is high, or just H, and the output is low. It's like we do inverting. Whenever you have a high input, you have a low output. Whenever you have, you have a low input, you have a high output. So this is, this is called the inverter. This is it's called inverter. Okay? Or inverter driver, you can say. Okay? It's a logic gate, just like the OR and the AND logic gates that we studied before. Okay, but this is very simple. It just invert the input. If the input is high, the output is low. If the input is low, the output is just very simple. Okay, so uh, if we go now to, let's see, bring this up. Yeah, so the first, So the first application is what's called inverter driver circuits, okay? And as I said, when the input is low, the output is high, when the input is high, the input is low. And this is a symbol, by the way, for this inverter. This is a symbol that we do, that we use for, uh, as a symbol for this, this kind of circuits, the inverter driver circuits, for inverter logic gate. But what is this guy, what is this term driver? Because this is also have another between saturation and, uh, and, the, and the cutoff. We have another uh, application, which is the driving, a driver circuit, okay? We drive something, some, some load that needs a high current, okay? And our transistor will be our driver in that, in that case. Remember, IC is equal to beta IB. So basically you have a current amplification. So if you have a circuit that drive is very low current, but you have to drive uh, to add a load to this circuit that needs a, a big current, like a lead, for example, LED, which needs maybe 100 milli amperes, 100 milli amperes, okay? So we put in, the, in between of them, uh, a transistor circuit, so we can still drive this high load using this uh, uh, low power circuit, or okay. circuits that can't that can't produce high current. Okay. So as as, as I mentioned, is the, the output current is big, it's beta times the input current. For example, is is if beta is one hundred, which is a very typical value, you have a hundred times the input current. 
So let's see an example for this. For the guys that will study uh, or studied microcontrollers, they are familiar with this, with this, this kind of circuit. We will be happy with. Okay. There is something called microcontrollers. It's just a very simple processor. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's not like the processor in computer. It's, it's similar. It's also do logic. Okay. And these devices usually very low uh, devices. I mean, very low power devices. And their maximum current is very small. Typically, for example, 20 milliamperes. This is a typical value for a microcontroller that I'm using myself, 20 milliamperes. Assume that we have a lid, I just forgot to, to draw it. Assume that you have a lid, okay? And this lid to, uh, to give you a good light, it needs at least 100 milliamperes. So we have a dilemma, we have a problem here. We have a microcontroller that can maximum give you 20 milliamperes. And you have a lid that needs 100 milliamperes at least to, to conduct. Okay. So for that problem, we put in between of them a transistor. Because a transistor basically can take the low current of the microcontroller and drive it or convert it into a very high current, which is IC in the, uh, in the LED, okay? So this is a, a typical example or typical problem, okay? So let's read it uh, word by word. Uh, design a transistor circuit. Design, when, it, when it says design, that means you find RC and RB. The, you put a circuit, it's a design, something out of out of out of nothing. So uh, you buy a transistor, you buy some, uh, you know, buy some resistors, and you need to know what kind of resistor you're gonna buy. So you need first to do that on a paper, and the bin, you know, make some choices, get the values, and go to the store and or buy it online, whatever, and they get the resistors and also that, uh, that transistor. So assume that it's available for you, a transistor with beta equal to 100. This is available, this is given. Or you are forced to do that. You are forced to uh, use a transistor with beta equal to 100. You only need to know RC and RB. Okay. The LED that you're gonna is uh, the LED that you're gonna light, or you want to drive it, okay? When it when it conducts, uh, it's VD, it's 2.8 volt. I said when we when we started LED LEDs, usually they require very high uh, on voltage, okay? Typically larger than one, not 0.7 like normal diodes. And it needs 100 milliamperes. I'm not sure if I write this. Oh, yeah, 100 milliamperes to give you a proper light. Okay. And the microcontrollers that you have uh, have a maximum current of 20 milliamperes. And the battery that you, that you have is 12 volt. Okay. So. First of all, you have to choose the uh, region of operation, okay? And you are free here, either to use active or saturation. So first, you have to choose the region of operation. for the transistor, either saturation or active. Now the question, which is better and why? I said that we have usually a concern with beta 
that it's not stable in value, okay? And it changes by temperature. So based on that, which is better to design the, the circuit or make the circuit to work at saturation or in active region? You want it in saturation? Yeah. That's right. also, you don't know yes. what the voltage on the output of that microcontroller is. It could be 3.3 volts or it could be five volts. Yeah, it's, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to mention this here. It should be five, I'm very sorry for this. It should be five. I am very sorry, so, okay. So let me, where to write it? Yeah, so the output voltage here, so the output voltage, output high voltage is equal to five. Yeah, this is the only thing, this should be here, yeah. I just forget to write it. And again, the, uh, the output, maximum current, 20 milliamps. So we're gonna choose it, yes, like what uh, Chris said, we're gonna choose it in saturation, okay? Deep saturation even. Why? Because we don't need, we don't want our circuit or our design to be dependent on beta. Beta usually changes very easily with temperature. And this, these circuits with high currents usually get uh, heated very fast. And when it, get, when it gets heated, even if the environment is have low temperature, this will change beta, okay? And the current may change as well. The IC, the 100 milliampere's, May change. It may be less. If it it's, if it increases, that's okay. Okay. But if it decreases, yeah, it will be a problem because the light that you're gonna see from the from the LED will be not good. It will be low, low intensity light. Okay. So we're gonna choose saturation region because. In that case, uh, the operation will not depend on beta. The operating point of the transistor will not depend on beta. Okay. okay, number two, in saturation, VCE is equal to 0.2. So the voltage now is known here, 0.2. And the IC, remember, is the current flowing in the lead. So it's not, it's 100 milliampers. You want the lead to have a 100 milliampers. And V lead, the voltage on the lead here is equal to two, I think 2.7, 2.8 volt. It's also no. So let's do Kirchhoff here in this outer loop. So let's draw it on a side here again for you. We have here 12, we have here RC, which is unknown. We have here Mr. IC and here is the voltage drop. Here is the voltage drop, here is the voltage drop. This is 0.2, this is 2.8, this is ICRC. And remember you have between these two points a 12 volt. So 12 by Kirch of voltage low, 12 equal to ICRC plus 2.8 plus 0.2, which is VCE. So R and the IC is known is 100 milliampers. So RC is equal to 12 minus 2.8 minus 2.2 over 100 milliampers. This will give us uh, how much? Let me check. Ah, oh, 90 ohms. 
Okay, good. So now you know what kind of uh, resistor we're gonna buy. You're gonna buy a, trans a resistor with 90 ohms. Now RB, RB. We can replace all the microcontroller by just a point. This point have a five. Remember you are in saturation. So IB, is larger than IC over beta. And we need to be in deep saturation. So in deep saturation, we will even, you know, just the higher than. And you know, the maximum current that can come out of the microcontroller is 20 milliamperes. So you must choose value and, and the, the output current of the micro is just IB now. So you must choose value less than 20 milliamperes. So the number two, number two, let's see now. Choosing with the selection of IB. Output current from the micro controller. Choose any value less than 20 milliamperes. For example, 10. So let's choose any value less than, I'm sorry, larger than. Yes, less, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, less than 20 milliamperes and larger than IC over B. It should be restricted by two, you know, uh, two things here. It should be less than 20 milliamperes to satisfy the requirement for the microcontroller and higher than IC over beta to satisfy the deep saturation assumption for a choice, okay? So choose IB, for example, it's 10 milliamperes. This will satisfy, this will uh, satisfy both. Good. So based on that, if you do Kirchhoff here in the input loop, you will see that RB equal to five minus 0.7 over IB. So IB is known 10 milliamperes because we choose it to be 10 milliamperes. So RB will be uh, 430 ohms. Okay, so let's you know recap this application more very brief, briefly. We see that based on the transfer characteristics, we saw that. Let's even go to back to the transfer characteristics. We saw that here the input is low, the output is high. Here the input is high, the opposite, but the output is low. And this is basically an inverter, okay? So you, if you need an inverter in a logic circuit, okay, a digital circuit, okay, you can design inverter using a transistor. Another application is that when we are in saturation region, the output is very small, but the current is very high. Okay. So we can interface low power devices like microcontroller, micro like this guy, for example, which has a maximum current output of five mil, uh, 20 milliamperes. Okay. You can use it to drive a LED. But you put in between a transistor circuit. To put this in between, this is, comes out of out of nothing. You need it to to, uh, to interface between the two, uh, you know, the high 
current application and the low power circuit. So you need to, to design the circuit. To design the circuit, you choose the operating region, either active or saturation. Saturation is better because it will give you uh, an immune circuit to the, to the beta changes, okay? But you can still, still uh, 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 design it inactive, you know? It's your choice. But this is a bad design. This is a good, better design, a good design. Okay. And to, uh, if you choose an active, this is the first cho choice that you did. The second the choice is the choice of IB. IB should be should be less than twenty milliamperes, because basically this guy cannot provide more than milliamperes. And less than IC over beta to assure that it's you are in deep saturation. Okay, so that's basically uh, the, what? The, the, the first application. Now let's go to the second application, which is a more interesting one, which is uh, amplification. Okay, so yeah, let's go back to the transfer characteristics and copy and paste it. Amplification usually done uh, or achieved in the active region. And I will explain why now we use a transistor circuit in active region to work as an amplifier. And how can we, how can we amplify basically a signal, okay? Till this moment, our circuits are just using DC sources. But let's assume that the input now is an AC. AC superimposed on another DC. So the input here is equal to some point, uh, let's assume one plus, yeah, one plus. This is an example, it is, would be easy for you to understand. One plus point five sine omega T. Okay, it's like something like this, one, and this is one, four, five. This is nine, five. This is clear. So it's just, you know, a signal. Oh, this is 10. This is RC, this is RB. It's a, a, sig a easy signal superimposed on a DC signal or an easy signal shifted by some DC signal, okay? So I assume one should be here. This is one, for example. We can superimpose the input and the output on the transfer characteristic because basically it's a relation between the input and the output. Okay, it will be a little bit weird for you, but you're gonna see this a lot afterwards. So this is the one. And that one, the output is, just give me a second here. The output will be what? The output will be seven. Then I will gonna, I'm gonna draw The small input like this, one nine uh, one oh five. This is point nine five. Remember one plus oh five is one oh five, and one minus uh, point oh five is ninety five point uh, nine five volt. Okay. Let's see what is the V output at the input maximum at the input maximum, which is one or five. This is the maximum input voltage. This is very simple because we know that VO is equal to inactive region. It's equal to 17 minus uh, 10 V input, equal to 17 minus 10 
1.05, 17 minus uh, 10.5. So this is this is seven boy. I'm sorry, six point six point five. Yeah, six point five volt. Good. So at so at one o five. The output is 6.5. Number one. Number two. At the input minimum, which is 0.95, this value. Again, VO equal to 17 minus 10 V input. 17 minus 10, 0.95, 17 minus 9.5, this is 7.5 this, this time. So at 9.5, we have 7.5. Look, when we increase the input, and of course at number three, at the input equal to one, if you did this 17 minus 10 multiplied by one, this would be seven. Look now, when we go from one to 105, I mean the input increased, the output decreased. From seven to six point five, and when we move from one to nine point nine five, I mean the input decreased, the output goes from seven to seven point five. It's increasing. Let's draw that here. So, when you go to one o five, you will have something like this, and when you move from seven or you move from one to 95, you will have something. So let's, when you go from uh, seven or one to 105, you go to from seven to 6.5. And when you go from uh, one to nine to 0.95, you go from seven to 7.5. The voltage peak to peak here is 0.1 volt. Now, what is the voltage peak to peak here? Basically, 7.5 minus 6.5, it's one volt peak to peak. So it's amplified by 10, by a factor of 10. And this is actually, you know, clear from the relation because in active region, we know that VO is equal to uh, 17 minus 10 V input. So this is actually the amplification factor, 10. But the problem is that there is inversion and for many applications, that's okay. What we only care is to have an amplified version of our input, uh, small input. So we have here a very small input, just 0.1 volt, big to big. And we have 10 times this, out, uh, this input here at the output, but inverted. I mean, they are out of phase. If this is increasing, this is decreasing. If this is decreasing, this is increasing. And you can even, you know, uh, uh, deal with this negative sign, you know. Okay, let's have now some observations about this process. This is just the highlight. I mean, what I just explained, a very simple example you know, that will highlight the main ideas that I want to conduct to you, okay? But of course, there are some, you know, uh, uh, something I did, which is, you know, not really correct, because I used what, you remember guys, the DC model? I said that uh, there is a model for the transistor, which you only used when you have a DC, which is a DC model, when you, when you have a saturation, VC is 0.2, VB is 0.7, you know, IC equal to bit IB, all such stuff, okay? I use the same model with an EC circuit, with an EC input now, 
IDC with EC, which is not quite true, but it conducts only the idea for you. That's, uh, that's my purpose from this, uh, from the previous explanation, okay? Now some observations. Uh, the first one, To use the transistor as an amplifier, you must work in active region. So the Q point, Q point guys is just operating point. Must be in active region. And why is that? Basically because in active region, you have a, a linear relationship between the input and the output. Because uh, this is the region in which you have I would put this uh, between a branches or brackets, almost a linear relation between VO and V input. Good. Number two. Yeah, the output is inverse to the input. And this is clear from the equation, so let's VO is equal to 17 minus 10 V input. And this, this is what caused this minus sign here, what caused this inversion. But in most applications, this is okay. Number three, where should be the best Q point? So we said that the Q point should be in active region. But where exactly it should be? Should it be in the middle of the active region? You know, toward or near the cutoff or near the saturation? Anybody has any answer or any guess? So let's go back to make it clear for you. So this is basically the characteristics. Okay, now in that example, the Q point is here. This is the current Q point. If you have to choose a Q point, if you assign the task in a company, hey, design for us an amplifier using the BGT transistor. So design means you have nothing and you will, you know, you will create it from scratch. So one of the op is one of the choices that you have to, to do is where uh, the Q point should be. Should be here or here near the cutoff or near the saturation. Any guess? You can stick that in the middle, man. Yes, of course. So let's do let's do it in the opposite way. So let's assume that you have a Q point just at the transition point. So let's choose it here, for example. That will be very bad for you. Let me change the color. Yeah. So let me choose the Q point here. So you have input 0.7 plus 0.05 sine omega t. So the input is just like this. Same as the uh, previous input, but now it's superimposed on a DC, but this DC is 0.7, not one volt. That's fine. 
let's see what's gonna happen. So for that portion here, these values are larger than 0.7. So you will be, so the input is larger than 0.7. So you will be in the active region, that's okay. And let's, let's draw the output of this guy. So it will be, we said that when, when the input increasing, the output decreasing. So it will be like something like this. Same sine wave, I mean same, by same, I mean same frequency. But it's going in the opposite direction. How about this portion? This portion of the input, all the values are less than 0.7. So for example, this value here is 0.65. This is 0.75 and in between 0.7. And do you know if the input is less than 0.7, the transistor will be cut off and the output is constant equal to BCC. So what you gonna see when you, when you have some, some input like this, you are gonna see this. So the, uh, you will have no positive portion and you will have only negative portion, it's amplified. So remember the voltage from here, from this point to this point is 0 0.05. Here from this point to this point, it's 0 0.5, 10 times. So this is 9.5. You can use the same equation to, to, to find that. But the most portion in organ, this is called cut off clipping. You have clipping everywhere in diodes and transistors, everywhere there is a clipping. Okay. And sometimes you call it distortion, just in general. This is distortion. But as a specific type, it's a cutoff distortion or a distortion be, or a clipping because of the cutoff, cutoff region. Because the transistor is, for some input, it's inactive, that's good, that's okay, that li that's linear. For um, some other portion, it's a cutoff. So the output is constant equal to 10. Now let's have another example. Now let's choose the operating point here. Let's change again the color. Let's make it black this time. At one, six, eight. Same input, one, six, eight plus 0 0.05 sine omega t. This will be, the maximum is 1.73, uh, uh, the minimum is 1.62. Okay. For this portion, which is a decreasing portion, all these inputs are less than 1.68. So the transistor will be in active region. And when you both uh, 168, 1.68 in this equation here, you will get, uh, you will get how much? Uh, I think 0.7, something like this. So you will get a, a sine wave. You know, this, this, this voltage here is 0.5. So yeah, this portion get amplified 10 times. But how about this portion now? when the input increasing until it reaches 1.73. For all that portion, the transistor will be in saturation. 
So the output is constant equal to point two. So this will be the output that you're gonna get. Opposite to the green one. Now, uh, the negative portion has clipped and only the positive portion get amplified. So this is called saturation clipping. Again, it's a distortion. So to get the maximum swing, you know, boosted to negative, this is called a swing. You should choose the operating point in the middle. Okay. So if you choose the operating point in the middle, the middle between this point and this point. Or point two and the VCC. So the best operating point should be in the middle of the active region. In our example, this means uh, at VBE, I'm sorry, at, uh, yeah, at V input, not VBE. Equal to the average between 0.7 and 0.68 over 2. This will give you the point in between. When you get some average between two points, you make you don't make subtraction, you make additions in add by two. Or in general, when VCE or V output equal to VCC point two over two again. The point between VCC, which is 10, and point two. And you will find, of course, this is basically based on our example. This is in specific for our for our example. The specific case for the example that I did, but you will find this in the books or any book that you read about this this topic. You will find that the best operating point is to choose VCE between point two and the VCC, which is the average. The average means this plus this over two, whatever the VCC is. And sometimes, because uh, usually VCC is much larger than 0.2, sometimes they just approximate it as follows. Because if you choose, if you omit this 0.2, it will be VCC over 2. This will give us maximum swing without distortion.